What is the X gene? Let's try and put this genetic puzzle together, shall we? Science behind the X-Men. Hopefully we've all seen Logan at this point, and if not, I highly recommend it. For those who don't know, Logan, the third and final installment of the Wolverine trilogy, is about an aged Wolverine caring for an aged Charles Xavier along with their friend Caliban. The three of them, presumably, are the last natural mutants until they come upon Laura, an unnaturally born mutant who holds the key to saving mutant kind. Looking at the events transpiring in Logan and the events that transpired beforehand, we come to a pretty big question. What is the X gene? What makes mutants mutants? They've apparently all either died or just not been born. So the X gene is apparently becoming extinct by the time of Logan. So what even is it? How does it work? Keep in mind, spoilers for Logan in this video. If you haven't seen the movie yet, do not watch this. So we're going to be looking at the X gene and mutants like we had a real life subject. Let's imagine that we're all in a lab and someone walked in, straight up unsheathed Wolverine claws, and asked us to figure out what was happening in their body. That's how we'll be examining this. Right off the bat, we need to know how to classify the X gene. As the name implies, it's a gene. But hey, what is a gene anyway? A gene is a biological unit that acts as a code for a life form. These genes are responsible for all your physical features, like hair color, number of fingers, and eye color. Genes are passed on from parent to offspring, which is why families inherit looks and features from each other. So, genes are biological codes that make us who we are based on who our parents are. Simple, right? Yes, but the X gene is a much different entity. If you notice, the X gene is actually something that adds to the human body without the need for heredity, nor the need for a staple human form. What I'm trying to say is the X gene gives mutants features that are, by all means, not human. Not naturally human, at least. So, where does this extra trait come from? When we look at this guy with these wolverine cloth popping out of his hands, what do we say is causing that genetic trait to have ever existed in the first place? Well, there are a few reasons as to why. Ultimately, it comes down to the theory of evolution. Keep in mind, evolution is still a theory. It is technically still unproven. Do I believe evolution exists? Yes. Do I believe it happens the way we believe it does? No, I don't. I don't think we know nearly everything about evolution. Not yet, anyway. Getting back on track, going off of the theory of evolution provides us two possibilities for the X gene. If the process of evolution is to be believed, then it's possible that the X gene was a result of some sort of next step. Evolution, in theory, is constantly trying to make a species adapt to the environment. If we think about it, a large amount of us humans are no longer in dire need of adapting like most animals. This doesn't mean we're done evolving, not by a long shot. But what it does mean is that it's possible that the X gene is a result of an accidental step forward. Our bodies are built, according to the theory of evolution, to evolve over millions of years. Now that the body doesn't really need to adapt, what happens? Maybe the machine went haywire and created some freak generation of mutants. However, while that one is entirely possible, there is another option that also relates to evolution. If we are, again, to believe the theory of evolution, all life has derived from a common ancestral species. Through extremely ancient ties, we are similar to cats, dogs, bears, eagles, and all other forms of life on Earth. Like I discussed in my lizard serum video, which you can watch here, there are many theories stating that we still have genetic code left over from our times as various different species, and that genetic code could be the X gene itself. Many X-Men characters bear some resemblance to animals. Beast, for obvious reasons, Wolverine with his retractable claws, Toad with his frog-like features, Blob with his mass amount of blubber, the list goes on. However, there are many issues with this side of the theory. Most of the X-Men have traits that are not found in the animal kingdom. I don't know of any animal that can control the weather, or time travel, or teleport, or a lot of these crazy abilities. Ultimately, the X-Gene seems like it was a freak accident that never has to happen, but did anyway. There are lots of actual cases like this. Some humans, like Nightcrawler, are actually born with tails, and this is something left over from our ancestors. Freak genetic accidents happen all the time, and ultimately some are way stranger than others. But it doesn't mean people should let their genes define them. The X-Men aren't just a group of superheroes. They're a group of people who rise to the occasion despite their freakish features and use it as a gift rather than a curse. At the end of Logan is when we best see this. Wolverine finally dies, but he didn't die meaningless. That X on his grave means something. He didn't die without a cause. He didn't die giving up. He fought to save people right to his last breath. That X right there represents what it means to have the X gene. It proclaims to the world, Wolverine didn't die a monster. 
he died a hero, he died as Logan, and above all else, he died an X-Man. <laughs>